ultimate lightweight survival gear for a plethora of different or for the main survival to core tasks. Now, why I've stressed what ultralight or lightweight gear for survival this summer especially is because weight is one of the biggest reasons why most people don't carry survival equipment. It's either too big, too bulky, too heavy, and they just don't want to carry it in their kit, on their packs, or on their person, so it ends up getting ditched. And that's the biggest problem with survival because the most important thing is to have the equipment on you when you need it. So now let's talk about some ultralight survival equipment Okay, so because this is a knife channel, I thought I'd start out with the knives. So the first one is going to be the Spyderco Street Buoy. Now the Street Buoy is not the most perfect of survival knives and is definitely designed more for knife fighting and being more of a kind of duty or military blade. It is still very venerable and very useful for survival because it is super lightweight. If if my memory serves, it comes in at around 3.2 ounces. So it is super, super lightweight. And for a nearly 10 inch knife, it is extremely hard. It is extremely hard to beat for that uh, size and weight. Okay, another one that is also pretty lightweight and pretty minimal is the SE3. Now the SE3 is around, I think five ounces, if I remember correctly. It is a little bit heavier, but it is also a full tang blade and still, in my opinion, has a very useful size to it for doing a wide plethora of different outdoor tasks. So if you're looking for something that is more weight conscientious, conscientious, the Spyderco Street Buoy is going to be the better option. But if you're looking for something that's a little bit more robust, but still pretty lightweight, the SC3 would be my choice. In addition to that, two folding knives, no doubt, kind of dominate this market of lightweight, useful survival blades. So I thought I would throw in the Spyderco 5, or Spyderco, the Benchmade 550 is the Benchmade 550 Griptilian. This one is very lightweight, very minimal in size as well. And it is a very capable, very tough, robust blade that is around the same size as the SE3 once opened. In addition to that, two, if you're looking for just sheer small size, the Grip Mini Griptilian, this is a 556. Uh, this one is also very, very capable and very useful. And of course that access lock means that it is quite tough. Undoubtedly, while having cutlery and cutting options is important, you're going to need a few more things. So for shelter, one of my favorite all around go-to shelter uh, pieces that is also lightweight are these Grabber Mylar Space Blanket slash tarps that are kind of dual sided. They have a Mylar interior and they have this kind of tarp material on the exterior, giving them some added rigidity and strength. So these are not quite like a Mylar blanket that is super fragile and super weak. These are def definitely more abrasion resistant and tough. They also have little grommets as you guys can see here, hopefully that give your corners a lot more rigidity and strength if you're using them to tie down or create a covering for you but undoubtedly who can beat who can compare with a tiny mylar blanket like this so usually i recommend running both because especially this tarp will be a lot more rigid for you know building a shelter and the little mylar blankets are going to be a lot better at covering your body uh, especially in times like right now where it's raining so that is kind of my ultimate lightweight options for shelter. Now, of course, shelter is great and dandy, but you're probably also going to want now shelter is fine and great and dandy, but you're also probably going to want fire. And for that, I have to say, ferro rods are probably one of the best options for bang for your buck. They're going to give you a great ability to start fires so long as you practice with them and you understand. And ferro rods come in a wide variety of sizes, thicknesses, and the overall kind of durability or how many strikes they can take. But in this case, especially even if you are looking for an ultralight or lightweight survival set up don't go easy or go cheap on your ferro rods go with a nice thick rod even if you end up making a handle like this for it where i just did some duct tape and just built up a duct tape handle with it with a little bit of paracord lanyard built into the uh built into this system so this is definitely what i would recommend if you're looking for a minimalist and ultralight kind of ferro rod setup it's very effective but uh 
but yeah don't go cheap on them and get a nice thick robust ferro rod even if you end up wrapping it with paracord and or uh, duct tape like mine okay so cordage is going to be the next thing we're going to talk about and for me i think one of the best lightweight cordages that you can get out there is going to be bank line or tarred bank line which is what this stuff is right here and tarred bank line is very effective this is braided as well it's essentially a nylon rope that has been tarred with or has been tarred and is very very water and ultimately very water resistant and very uh, mold mildew resistant because of that tarred finish. Now this stuff of course is not quite as versatile as uh, paracord is but it is also a lot thinner and it can come it does come in a number of thicknesses that all have their own uh, weight ratings but by and large for the thickness you get a really good weight rating and this stuff is once again very effective for different binding and cordage needs and you probably don't want to carry quite a large spool like this but making a small you know 10 foot little butterfly spool for this is very easy and very effective and gives you a good amount of cordage to work with so once you have your bases covered you got your shelter all figured out you got a fire running you're going to need water and food so for water the best ultralight setups that i have to recommend are going to be aluminum foil and making a pretty good size of aluminum foil and then of course condoms and while as funny as they are uh, or as funny as it may seem or people love to laugh and joke about it condoms especially so unlubricated condoms are super, super effective at carrying lots of water. You can, if you know what you're doing and uh, you do it cautiously, you can carry up to a liter of water in a condom like this. And it is super effective because you can see how small this can literally fit in your pocket, but carry up to a liter of water. Now, the reason why I like the aluminum foil is because this is a great system for carrying water. Condoms are a great system for carrying water, but once you have that water, how are you going to purify it? And aluminum foil is kind of that solution. It's not the most perfect solution and you can't necessarily directly boil with this, but you can do things like heating up rocks in a fire and placing those hot rocks in an aluminum foil container. And you can place those hot rocks in the aluminum foil to help heat up your water and help disinfect it. Also, in addition to that too, even with the condom, you can use things like iodine tablets to purify or at least clean the water or neutralize any pathogens that are in the water. In addition to that too though, if you are looking for something that is pretty darn effective, it is not quite as lightweight, but still in my opinion, pretty lightweight, is something like the Grail Geopress. There's also the smaller Geopress. So this is a full sized one. They make a smaller one, but either one of them is extremely effective. You don't need a fire. You don't need tablets for purification. This is a one and done system and functions as both a water bottle on the inside, as you guys can see here. And it also functions as a um, water filter on the outside. Okay, now that you have water, fire, shelter, all of those core essentials figured out, you're going to also want food. And the best way, the lightest way to get food in the field is of course to hunt, trap, and fish for it yourself. But aside from that too, things that you can carry in the field that are super lightweight are these little shots of peanut butter. And these little guys right here are super lightweight. This is 32 grams of peanut butter. But as you guys can see on the back here, it is 210 calories so carrying a couple of these or even three or four of these is very very easy you can see how thin they are Should line them up better but you can see how thin they are you can see just how large they are once again easy to throw in a pocket especially in a pack and you can have right here is 420 calories just like that but it'd be easy to carry four of these and you'd be looking at over 800 calories just in these alone now i'm not gonna lie these are definitely not the most delicious and the most filling meal but at the same time too for for what they are for their size they have an incredibly high amount of calories in them so of course focusing on lightweight survival options they are a no-brainer 
Okay guys, that has been some of the lightweight survival options, stuff that I run, stuff that I like, and stuff that ultimately I recommend for you guys if you are looking for choosing things that are lightweight for your survival uh, kits for your survival kits, survival bags, and even just to carry on your body out in the wild. As always, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. God bless, and I'm out.